The next topic that I want to talk about is mysticism within the Christian faith. I want to draw your attention and come with me if you've got your Bibles to 2 Corinthians 12. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2 we read, reading from verse 1. Boasting is necessary, though it is not profitable, but I will go to the visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or out of the body I do not know, God knows, such a man was caught up to the third heaven. And I know such a man from verse 3. How such a man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words which a man is not permitted to speak. Now, here the Apostle Paul is talking about mystical experiences. The Christian faith has a tradition that goes back to the oldest times, back to the apostles themselves of mystical experiences. Let us just be clear about what a mystical experience is. It is a supernatural, existential experience that has a transformative impact upon the individual identity of those that endure them. It has a radicalizing effect upon those that experience the mystical experience. Mystical experiences occurred amongst the first Christians. And as I said, there is a strong mystical tradition within the Christian church. Saint Francis of Assisi had mystical experiences. Julian of Norwich had mystical experiences. Jacobe Dutode had mystical experiences. Catherine of Siena had mystical experiences. John of the Cross had mystical experiences. Gerard Marley Hopkins had mystical experiences. Simone Wheel had mystical experiences. Robert Fox had mystical experiences. I've just gone through hundreds of years of Christian history identifying that Christians have continued to have mystical experiences. And what is the conclusion of that mystical experience and the history of it? It is simply this, that Yahweh still speaks to his church, that our God is a living God who is not silent. He is not like the dead God of the Muslims who speaks to no one. I mean, Allah didn't even speak to Muhammad. He sent an angel. Yeah. Allah never spoke to Muhammad. Muhammad never saw Allah. But Christians have a continuous experience of God speaking to his people, of God speaking to our prophets. Now, remember the caution in Corinthians 12 verse 1. Boasting is necessary, but it is not profitable. Mystical experiences do not make you special. They don't make you invulnerable to criticism. They are not something that gives you divine authority to rewrite scripture or write new scripture or to create new doctrine. In fact, the Bible instructs us clearly to test every spirit, to test all spirits, to see that they are coming with the same revelation as that which was given by the apostles. Because anyone who speaks another gospel apart from this is someone who is speaking of the devil. A spiritual experience that you might have can only complement the gospel, can only complement the truths of the Christian faith. It can never contradict 
nor can it ever legitimise or justify any immoral behaviour. I give you the example of a Pentecostal, two Pentecostals, the founders of God TV. The husband of the founder of God TV is a Pentecostal called Rory Alec. He cheated on his wife and committed adultery because his now girlfriend had had a mystical experience saying that Rory Alec would become her husband. And so she believed that it was legitimized by God to cheat on a sacramental marriage. This same person, this same person left his wife and family, left the work that God had given him to do, abandoned his vocation. Mystical experiences do not contradict the scripture. The mystical experience will lead to personal radicalization. It will lead to a personal deepening of your scriptural Christian apostolic faith. It will lead to you being more committed to a Christian identity, not less seeking to uphold the entirety of a Christian worldview, not just the bits that are convenient to you. The mystical experience is not proof of the existence of other gods. It is not a ex ex proof of other truths. Other religions also have mystical experiences because there is such a thing as the supernatural. Muhammad, I believe, genuinely had a mystical experience of a devil, of a demon, of a shaitan. The ultimate test of your mystical experience is how it leads you to God. And so, my final thing is Jesus said, our Lord, do not throw pearls before swine because of the very nature that a mystical experience is a subjective experience it does not prove anything to anyone except the person that has it so don't use it as proof don't throw it before skeptics to be mocked and trampled underfoot because unless they believe in the supernatural they will never appreciate what you have to say unless they believe in the God of the Christians they will never appreciate that God speaks to you multiple times I've heard Christians talk about their mystical experience as if it proves something to a Muslim or an atheist and then they're just mocked for it Learn to do as Jesus says, do not throw pearls before swine, but do be faithful to what God is calling you to, as all the saints aforementioned did.